Video 2. This video describes the task number 2 of this introduction to BGP multicast VPNs. Let's start. Like any other IP packet, a multicast packet has a source and a destination IP address. Its destination IP address is multicast. In other words, it represents a group rather than an individual host. However, the source IP address of a multicast packet is not a multicast one. It is the unicast IP address of the host acting as a source. As you probably know, unicast connectivity to the source is one of the most critical pieces of the multicast puzzle. In this task, there is a multicast source whose unicast IP address is represented as CS. C for customer, S for source. This IP address belongs to a subnet that is advertised from CE1 to PE1 using external BGP. You can see the BGP update in capture number one that is available for download in PCAP format at the day one website, like all the other captures. So PE1 receives the route in a VRF called VRF1. At this point, it needs to re-advertise the route in the context of the VPN it belongs to. The resulting prefix contains the route distinguisher of VRF1. The PE sends it via multi-protocol internal BGP to the route reflector, which in turn sends the route to PE2, PE3, and PE4. The PEs receiving this route re-advertise it to their neighboring CEs using external BGP. This is how CE3 learns how to reach the unicast IP address of the customer source. Let's see these routes in detail. The 10.10.10/24 prefix belongs to the address family INET Unicast. In other words, AFI1 SAFI1. However, this is only true if the CE is using multi-protocol BGP. Although this is a valid option, in this workshop, the CEs are configured to use plain vanilla BGP, which has no multi-protocol extensions. So, the address family identifiers are not included explicitly in the BGP update. Next, PE1 converts the route into INET VPN unicast format corresponding to AFI1 SAFI128. PE1 adds VPN context to the route by adding a route distinguisher and a VPN label to the original prefix. The route distinguisher allows for the same prefix to be advertised in the context of different VPNs while remaining unique. Also, packets arriving to PE1 from the core and address to 10.10.10/24 subnet in VRF1 should have an MPLS label equal to this VPN label. When PE3 wants to send a unicast packet to the customer source, it typically needs to push two MPLS labels, the VPN label and the transport label of the label switched path that goes from PE3 to PE1. Why to PE1? Because it's the next hop of the BGP route 172.16.11.11. In this workshop, you use LDP to signal the MPLS labels for transporting unicast traffic. Later in this workshop, you will use a different protocol to signal the tunnels for multicast transport. Finally, an extended community called Route Target is added to influence how the route will be imported in remote PEs like PE3. More precisely, in which VRFs it will be installed according to the import policies in the remote PEs. In this scenario, you are using a full mesh topology, so all the unicast routes in VRF1 carry the same route target regardless of which PE is advertising them.